All right, welcome back. This is uh, part two for June 28th, and we're going to get right into the uh, prophecies that Jesus told us to look for. And I'm going to center at this time on Luke 21:25, where the Lord tells us about the roaring of the seas and the waves. And also, I'm going to combine this one section here with Revelation chapter 7, verse 15 through 16, and also in Revelation chapter 16, verse 8 through 11. Now, in Revelation, those verses, we see that the Lord is warning about intense heat that's coming and scorching the earth and people who became hungry and they became thirsty. And we know that things... Uh, that cause this are obviously the intense heat which causes drought which causes uh, the destruction of crops which causes people to be hungry and causes people to be thirsty and we also know at the same time that the water that is there in the oceans as it rises the salt water as it rises because of these fresh water uh, glaciers that are melting and you can't drink that water when it gets in, into the uh, into the ocean when it becomes salty. Uh, so at the last days, there's going to be a lack of water. And uh, these are the references that Jesus makes in the book of Revelation. Now, over the course of these many years, scientists have been studying the glaciers to show you and to show us as they're writing all these reports how fast these glaciers are melting, which is going to rise the level of the ocean. And uh, because of the storms that are coming out, we're seeing more destruction. As a matter of fact, there's some uh, countries now, smaller countries, they're being almost swiped out because the water has gone up, um, uh, rise so high that uh, they actually have to evacuate uh, a lot of the people in those tiny nations that are being swallowed up now by the increase of the uh, the water. And so let me give you, this is an article from Science Daily, and all of this information again is in my book. You'll see it also at my website. If you go to www.bibleprophecyman.com and you start doing a search there, you'll see all of these articles there, but they're all condensed in my newest book that came out of... Uh, as of June 20, or 30th, 2011. So this article is entitled, Ocean Currents Speed Melting of Antarctica Ice. The major glacier is undermined from below. It says, stronger ocean currents beneath the west uh, Antarctica's Pine Island Glacier shelf, ice shelf are eroding the ice from below, speeding the melting of the glacier as a whole, according to a new study by Nature Geoscience. A growing cavity beneath the ice shelf has allowed more warm water to melt the ice. The researchers say, a process that feeds back into the ongoing rise of global sea levels. I hope you're paying attention to what Jesus was telling us, because it's happening. And this is only the beginning. It says the glacier is currently sliding into the sea at a clip of 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles a year, while its ice shelf is melting at about 80 cubic kilometers a year, 50% faster than it was in early 1990s, the paper estimates. So there you have it. You have the news showing us that there's definitely a melting going on and uh, it's not something that somebody's making up. You can actually see what's going on if you travel to these places. Now here's another one. I'm going to show you this article before I read it. This way you can freeze it right there at the uh, video and you can Google it. It'll take you to my site. That's an easier way to get to my site and find out about this article. It says, Glaciers melting faster than originally thought. And this came out in April 4th of 2011, a little bit earlier than this last article that I just gave to you. It says, The calculations show that some 270 glaciers that cover the area have lost 606 cubic uh, kilometers of ice. This is the first time that a loss of volume has been calculated to include this far back in time. Recent studies of the glacier loss have only gone as far back 
is when satellite imaging of the glaciers could be used to calculate loss. It says while this study does show that the rate this glacier melting and its uh, contribution to the sea level rise is increasing. This was not <clears throat> their most alarming discovery. In other words, there was something else that they discovered while they were looking for the sea rising in this research that they were doing. It says, research shows that the rate of melting from the beginning of the 20th century was slower than previously thought. Get this, hold on. It says, their research, however, also shows that since 1980, the rate of the glacier loss has increased by over 100 times that of the previous 320 year long term average. Now, it is melting 100 times faster. Now, I'm going to connect what Jesus told us in the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 8. He said, in the last days, these signs would be as birth pains. The closer we get, the worse these signs are going to be. And as you can see, they are definitely getting a lot worse since the 1980s when it comes regards of the ice melting. And this is only a little bit of the information. I overwhelm you. Uh, a good lawyer would give as much information uh, in, a, in a case that he's being tried to prove his client innocent. And he would give enough information for the jury to make that decision whether this person is guilty or innocent. And believe me, I poured it on for you so you won't have any problem whatsoever determining that what Jesus tells you is actually taking place. Now here's another one. Remember Revelation? Chapter 7, Revelation chapter 16, warned about the droughts, the thirst, um, and the intense heat. And my book is loaded with documents to prove that this is happening, but here's a new one. I'm going to put this up. You can freeze it if you'd like. And if you can't see it, I'm going to read it for you, and then you'll be able to uh, just type in from the Google search at that point. It says, worst drought in 60 years it's 10, excuse me, M-I-N, in East Africa. 10 million people in the Horn of Africa have been hit by the worst drought in 60 years with the situation deteriorating to the point of famine in some areas, the UN said Tuesday. Over 10 million people are affected by the drought in one way or the other. So you see that just like the water is the worst you know since 1980 now we're starting to see the drought in this case is worse in 60 years this drought now you'll find one thing very evident when you read my research and as i give you all the documentation just about every article that you're going to be reading you'll see that it says it's much worse than it was before or it's it's getting a lot worse or it's magnified and these are again signs of what Jesus told us in the last days about the birth pangs. We are definitely getting closer and these events are getting a lot worse. Now, one of my favorites is Daniel. Daniel showed us specifically what two of the characteristics were going to be like with the people living in the last days. And in Daniel chapter 12 verse 4, God showed him, and he wrote it to us, and he told us that in the last days, our generation, the last generation, would be known for their increase in knowledge and people traveling back and forth. Now, what I did, what I did is give you some new information. My book is loaded with it, but I give you some new information, which is also in my book, to show you that this prophecy has already been fulfilled uh, in our generation. Now, since the birth of the computers in our generation, the increase of knowledge has expanded more so than all the generations combined since man was created, just in the last 50 years. So that prophecy, we know that very specific prophecy has been fulfilled. Now, get this. Coming soon, the test tube burger, lab-grown meat needed to feed the world. 
You know, there's a problem in the world because there's so many people being born and there's not enough food. And just in the last couple years, there's been a lot of food being taken out by massive floodings, droughts, um, devastation, and wars. And so listen to what it says. It says the first test tube hamburger is only a year away, the scientists claim. They believe the product, beef mince, grown from stem cells, could pave the way for eating meat without animals being slaughtered. Then you'll, they'll show you how it happens. They just take the stem cell from the cow, you see it right here, and then it goes into a little dish. It, then it will develop in a dish and it'll end up coming out as meat. Of course, it won't be real cow. Um, but I suppose what you can do is go get one of those little boxes that makes the cow sign. Uh, the, 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 the cow noise so that when you eat it you just press on the thing and you can as you're eating this uh, made belief stem cell meat that you'll at least be able to hear the cow mooing when you're when you're eating it but here's the bottom line the intelligence of man has gotten to the point where they're creating the things that God created for us to eat and when this happens We've seen similar things happen in the past, not in our generation, but they've happened before. Nimrod thought that he had the ability to reach into heaven when they were building the Tower of Babel. And God saw what they were doing, and he knew that if he didn't stop them, they would just keep building this. And God, obviously, he stopped them by uh, changing the language so they couldn't finish the project. And we're seeing this kind of thing happen today where the people in this last generation think that they're so smart, they're taking on the qualities of God, of creating things. Now, you don't even need a man or a woman to, uh, to create because they're using, they can take the sperm or they can take and they can put it in a dish and they can, and they can do this uh, fertility and, and you can get life now. So they're actually playing God. Now here's another one because I wanted to give you two of them because one shows the increase of knowledge as far as some of the new science that they're coming out with this cow meat. And the other when the Lord said they will be traveling to and fro. Now when you read my book you'll see all the different ways you'll know that we've already landed on the moon. We have all these different uh, uh, spacecraft that are moving around but we this article shows how fast we are moving now from nation to nation as people travel uh, back and forth and in this generation more people have traveled than any generation ever and you'll see millions and millions of people that are traveling the world every single day now look at this it says twice as fast as Concorde the supersonic jet that will fly from London to New York in two hours this plane does a Mach 3. A, uh, it says a Mach 3.6. And this is, says the jet that can fly from London to Sydney in three and a half hours could rob the Concorde of its title as the fastest ever passenger jet. Uh, plans have been unveiled for the, the Hypermac Sonic Star, a business jet that will be capable to the top speed of 2,664 miles per hour. So there you have it. You got, this is what it looks like. And the Lord said in the last days, they will have what? They will increase in their, edu in their knowledge and that they will be traveling back and forth and here's only two of the articles that show you this generation, this generation has done ex and fulfilled exactly what the prophets and what Jesus Christ shows us in his word. So again, please scroll down. We're going to continue on for June 28th to show you some, e some more signs that are taking place. Thanks.